There are many times in life that you see two wires near each other. So let's do the force between two current, carry, current carrying wires and think about that. I got I1 here and I've got I2. Wait a second, do you guys want them to go the same way or different ways? Oh, all right, we'll have them go the same way this time. All right, I got current one and I've got current two. And I don't really want to think about right now whether they're attracted or repulsed from one another, but I'd like to think about how big the force is. So let me draw a divider here and we can see them in a different perspective. I wanna see one up, uh, sorry, I wanna see actually, I wanna see both of them going into the page. So here's current one and here's current Two. We know two things already, and all we have to do is combine them. First of all, the force on one is going to be, what do we know? We know it's B-I-L, right? So it's B times I times L. And they're right, they're properly oriented so that this force is going to be maximal. And I'm just going to figure out how big it is. Again, not the direction that it points. Over here, we can think about the direction it points. I'll probably draw it again because <laughs> that's kind of sloppy. So the force on one depends on the current in one, right? It also depends on the magnetic field created by two, created by two, where one actually is. <clears throat> so I'm going to say the field of two times the current in one times the length that they are, excuse me, the length that they are parallel. That's this length right here. That's how L is going to come into it. That's going to be a, um, something that we just take to be known for us. <clears throat> but we know the magnetic field caused by wire two. But magnetic field uh, caused by two is equal to, oh, we just did that. It's mu naught times the current enclosed, like the current of wire two. Hmm, the current of wire two divided by two times pi times how far apart the wires are. We need to get another parameter over here. We're gonna call this distance the separation of the wires. It's probably gonna be center to center. So let's draw this a little more carefully. Okay, good. Uh-huh, uh I'm gonna call that R right there. And now I'm gonna take this and plug it into here. So the force on one, force on one, is mu naught times I, Two times I1 times L divided by two times pi times the separation of <clears throat> the centers of the two wires. I want to point out also that the force on two, wait a second, Newton's third law tells us what that's going to be. I guess that you follow the same procedure and you'll just find that it's mu naught times I1 times I2 times the length that they are parallel divided by two times pi times the distance that they are apart. And of course, multiplication is commutative and you see that this is the same as that. And so the force on one is the force of on two, but they are opposite directions. All right. I want a little bit more room and I want to do some different colors so we can figure out what direction the force is. And this may surprise you. In fact, I was really pissed at my physics teacher when I first learned this. I was sure that he was making a mistake. So, always trust your physics teacher. That's the first lesson. Here is wire one. And wire one has a current that's going down. And here is wire two. And wire two has a current that's also going down. I'm not gonna work the other situation where one's up and the other one's down, uh, or furthermore, the one where they're both up, but I hope that you'll be able to figure those out on your own. <clears throat> current one is creating a magnetic field in all space, and we know that we have to use the right-hand rule for that, so I put my thumb in the direction of the current, and I make the magnetic field curl around it. So that means below the page or behind your screen, I've got magnetic field pointing to the right. And up above the page or in front of your screen, by your nose, I've got magnetic field pointing to your left. So it's going in here and it's going out over on this side and I'm gonna draw the magnetic field caused by wire one. It's in over here, in and in and in and a little bit weaker further out, but still in. And over here, it's out and out and out, and a little bit weaker over here, out, out. And there's still, even way over here, there's still some magnetic field caused by wire, <clears throat> by wire one. 
And so I'll label that all these blue circles are magnetic field caused by wire one. All right, now we need to, wait a second. We can do it right now. Wire two is in a magnetic field of wire one. And so the charges moving in wire two, let's pretend for a moment that they are positive charges moving. They're positive charges going down and they're in a magnetic field that's pointing out of your screen. So I've got velocity that direction and I go like that to show the magnetic field is coming out of the screen. And I see that to the, what's that, your left? Gosh, I'm totally upside down. This is to your left that the force is on wire two. And already you can make a ton of predictions. But this, let's draw it here. This is the force, force of one on two. Wire two is in a magnetic field, so of course it feels a force. But let's continue our discussion. Wire two is creating its own magnetic field. And wire two's magnetic field has a similar structure to wire one's. Over on your left side, there's a magnetic field in, and over on your right side, there's a magnetic field out. I suppose back behind the screen, there's a magnetic field to your right, and up above the screen, in front of the screen, you're gonna have a magnetic field to your left. But I'm only gonna be able to one, draw the ones that are in the plane for me right now. And I've got magnetic field from wire two pointing like this. Da, 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 da. And there's also some over here getting a little bit weaker as we get further away. And there's even still some over here. Oh, look at the beautiful wire. Now there's also some magnetic field over here and it's pointing outward. <coughs> mm -hmm. And there's magnetic field over here, but it's getting weaker and weaker. And I have to label these guys as the magnetic field from wire two. <gasps> okay, wire one finds itself in a magnetic field. Now, wire one's not affected by its own magnetic field. That's stupid. Wire one is affected by the magnetic field of wire two, which is pointing into your screen. So I see wire one, shh, that direction, magnetic field, that direction, wait a second. Wire one velocity, that direction of positive charges, magnetic field, that direction, and therefore the force on wire one because of wire two is to the right. You could have told me that from Newton's third law. But we'll draw it anyway. Force of two on one is to your right. And we see that the wires are attracted when the current is parallel. I better summarize that because I'm not sure that you fully believe me yet. Wires attracted when currents parallel. This was the result that shocked me. I thought everything was opposites attract. This is same direction and they attract. And I was just sort of in disbelief. I did not believe that it was correct. But check the derivation. I think you'll find it to be satisfactory. One more thing before we close this out. I want to point out this. In the region in between the two wires, the magnetic field from one is the opposite direction of the magnetic field from the other one. You see that? So the magnetic field is sort of canceling out in here. Outside though, the magnetic field from wire one is the same as the magnetic field from the other wire. And so you've got a big magnetic field over here and you've got a big magnetic field over here. This is sort of the opposite of a parallel plate capacitor in which we found that the, mag the, sorry, the electric field between the two plates was really, really, really big and we found virtually no electric field outside of the two plates in a parallel plate capacitor. It's kind of the exact opposite of that situation. And you can find something a lot more like a parallel plate capacitor if you reverse the current of one of these. Like if this one were going up, we'd have a big field in here, no field out here. Well, essentially no field out here and no field out there. And that's the basis for building something called a solenoid, which is going to be awesome, but not for right now.